every buyer is unique. But in most industries, it's impossible to target your marketing on individuals. So instead, we identify broad classes of individuals who share certain characteristics like buying preferences or needs or budgets. This allows us to target our marketing to those broad classes and identifying those broad classes is market segmentation. Market segmentation is a big, complex and specialist topic. So here we can only touch on the broad outline. We can segment a market in many ways and we'll start by thinking about consumer markets, products that we sell directly to individuals. Business markets can often be segmented in analogous ways and we'll come to them afterwards. The first segmentation is geographic and this can be as broad as countries or even continents. Many businesses start their segmentation with Africa, Asia, North America, Europe. Or it could be regions within continents like Scandinavia, Northern Europe, Southern Europe. It could be the West Coast of America, Middle America or the East Coast. It could be North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa and South Africa. Or the geographic segmentation could be a lot more local, looking at individual states or regions or even cities within a large country. This segmentation often works well because the geographical boundaries often correlate with cultural traits that influence buying behaviours and the needs and preferences of the consumer markets. The second kind of segmentation is demographics. That's the nature of the people. And there are many different ways that we can segment our markets demographically. The obvious ones are things like gender or age. But we can also look at things like occupation, income levels, family status. There are many, many demographic indicators. However, it's important to note that in many countries it is a legal requirement as well as a moral one to avoid discrimination. An obvious example is gender discrimination, which is illegal in many countries. Equally so is racial discrimination. And any marketing campaign which inadvertently or by design discriminates among consumers based on a legislated demographic trait will get you into big trouble. However, it's important to note that if you frame your marketing properly, there is no reason why you cannot identify your market as primarily within one demographic group. An obvious example is toy manufacturers. Of course, they can market their products to children and young people. And the garment manufacturers, the fashion houses, of course, will market to either to men or to women as their primary consumers. The next is geodemographic segmentation, and this is a lot more sophisticated because it bundles together a number of geographic and demographic segmentation factors to create smaller, more specific groupings. Examples might include wealthy suburban homeowners, affluent rural elders, young city living professionals, or low income single parents. Psychographic segmentation looks at personal, psychological and lifestyle characteristics. These are the sort of factors that lead to personality based choices in buying behaviours. Segmenting by social classes is one example of psychographic segmentation. My last example is behavioural segmentation, which looks at buyers actual behaviours. It looks at the things they do and the things they need and the choices they make as your basis for segmentation. So to carry out this segmentation, you need to ask questions like, how do they use this product? What level of knowledge do they have? And what are their attitudes to products? A good example comes from the tech industry where they might describe their customers as newbies, domestic users, prosumers and power users. Each of these groups 
will have different levels of knowledge, experience, and expectation of your products, and they might use different feature sets. As we move up from novices to the power users, there will be a greater expectation of features and quality. Here, we also have attitude factors like readiness to buy, brand loyalty, or even something as simple as whether their perceptions of your product or brand are broadly negative or broadly positive. Arguably, market segmentation in the business to business world is somewhat simpler, even though on the face of it, there are more different ways that we could segment because there are probably fewer different types of company and there are types of people. Business market segmentation might look at factors like geographic location and indeed geographic spread, the industry of the buyer and the size of the organization, the scale of their needs and the volumes they're likely to purchase. And of course, their purchasing policies and procedures and the credit terms they expect, their operating models, their level of purchasing sophistication, the extent to which you have existing relationships. And of course, their attitudes to things like risk, quality and price. Of course, both business to consumer and business to business market segmentation is a complex thing and it will often be based on multiple factors. And critically, organizations doing this properly will start with huge amounts of data and very thorough analysis. For a general manager, the methodologies of market segmentation aren't important. But what is important is that you understand the principles behind it why it's important and the broad segmentation that is used by the marketing teams in your organization. Please do give us a like if you've learned from this video. I'll be creating loads more great management courses content for you, so please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and in the meantime, keep learning.